this is iMac. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we dance. Tonight we're looking at an all-time classic, the G3 iMac, the very first of the iMac series. Not the most exciting of all the color options that existed. This Snow G3 iMac is a lovely looking computer, but this particular one is very dirty. Uh, it has a ton of dust, some little stains, uh, chip marks from when they got rammed into the wall. On the back here we have a lovely peeling sticker, which is, you know, like the balding head of computers. And beyond that, um, I know it runs. I think it has OS 9 on it, uh, just based on what I saw for like a brief glimpse when I purchased it. I did buy it about a month and a half ago, so I don't really remember much about the stats. Because we're working with high voltage here, this thing's been unplugged for a while, for over a month and we have pressed the power button without anything plugged in a number of times. Uh, a lot of these things had uh, like a, I think it was called a voltage bleeder or like a, basically a device where when you shut it down, it slowly bleeds out the high voltage charge left inside the CRT. We're not gonna mess around with the CRT at all. Really, all I wanna do is get this case off and cleaned because it looks terrible inside and out. And then the other thing is on the front, the um, CRT support plastic has cracked quite a bit. So I'm gonna see if I can glue some of that back together. I'm gonna use a little bit of super glue with some instant bond. Um, aside from that, I guess we may as well get started. Presenting three easy steps to the internet. Step one, plug in. Step two, get connected. Step three, <laughs> there's no step three. There's no step three. <laughs> Because this G3 is still fairly strong in its current state, I'm gonna actually clean the exterior of it first, and then we're gonna go inside. Okay, taking things off here. Put a little bit of the Dex on a paper towel. Mm, mush it in. Mm. 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 And then start with the glass which really needs a cleaning. Many millennia of fingers all touching and rubbing this thing. Okay. Put another quick, how's your father? Now I'll be the first one to admit that I think this case is certainly yellowed a little bit. Uh, this front panel in particular. I could be wrong as I really don't have another one to compare it to. The Windex is doing a decent job of cleaning up the plastic though, which is good to see. You love to see it. Turning our attention to this side. Look at this. It's just pure filth. Let's get rid of this thing. Ugh, just turning into powder. Well, never a good sound when you put a computer upside down. It feels like stuff is falling through it.
So after checking out the upgradable RAM slot, I threw the RAM back in and continued to remove the additional panel at the bottom with the um, VGA output. Afterward, the top, or I guess the bottom, because we're looking at the bottom, it's just upside down. That actually took a very long time to get off. I skipped most of the footage of me trying, and wow, is it ever difficult. Right now we're removing the static cage. When you do any sort of repairs or adjustments to this thing, you're supposed to touch the screen to remove any electric shocks before getting to the motherboard. Very exciting. So here we get a good look at the motherboard now with the additional RAM and RAM slot, which is funny if you think about the fact that they could have just put two sticks of RAM in here and saved some additional space in the upgrade bay. Now the plastic on this thing was very worn out, so there are two little plastic plugs in front of the screws that I just took off, and those just were demolished the minute that I tried to wedge them out. This part I was a lot more careful with. I'm currently just installing an OS on a MacBook Pro I bought. Hey, that's what that sound was. <clears throat> so, the CRT housing was very cracked and damaged. There was even a loose chunk there. Um, and here I've taken some super glue on a toothpick so that I could gently work it into the cracks without any overflow. The last thing you want with super glue is overflow. It looks absolutely dreadful. And this is Instant Bond. Another thing you want to be careful with in this sort of repair, because Instant Bond can actually cause the super glue to turn yellow, and it does generate heat when you uh, put the two chemicals together. So you do have to watch for that. A little more super glue going into the cracks and crevasses. Just fit that back in. A little more super bond, Instant Bond. James Bond, Michael Scott. Give her the old rub down. A little visit from Winslow. Whatever I do, the cats always want to be a part of it. I think that's part of the joy of cats. Ever curious, ever weird. They like to flash their buttholes at the camera. No idea why. Luckily Winslow didn't do that here. I had to cut it out. So we're in inside the bottom half of the case now, uh, removing dust. There was a lot of dust in here. It doesn't show up too well on camera, but it, it was packed full of brown dust. So I'm just reattaching the front plate now. All right, we're all cleaned up, ready for our first boot. Got the mini fire extinguisher on hand. Here we go. Okay, no boot chime. Strange. Wow, that is a very dark monitor. All right, so at this point in time, I thought I was going to be able to install the OS using original OS discs that I have. Problem that I didn't realize is there was a disc stuck in the optical drive. So I had to bust out an additional iMac and maybe try and install it with the discs in one with a working optical drive via FireWire. I know this is hard to look at and I apologize, it's just the way it is with CRTs until I get a better camera or figure out the resolution. I wouldn't big bum. So we're just waiting and waiting, giving kisses to the cat.
I was watching The Wire while this was all going on, and I had to unfortunately delete much of the sound because I didn't want to get hit with copyright. But what we did here is, after realizing I couldn't install the discs, I could only install the first of a series of discs onto the other uh, iMac through Firewire, I had to whip out the G4 iMac because if I have a transferable file of the OS I'm looking for on a USB stick, I can transfer it onto the iMac G4, whereas the G3 just wouldn't read the stick at all. And then I can use FireWire to install it onto the one we were trying to work on. It's a very involved process. Yes! Finally! So as you can see here, I am uh, in jovial spirits as a result of it finally working through the G4. It actually took over an hour to transfer a 4 gigabyte OS file from a USB stick onto the G4. So it's newer, but not that new. Okay, things are happening here, folks, finally. So everything installed, just quickly filling in some information, like my time zone and all that personal info. Woohoo. Don't forget to register, yes. Animation Studio, okay. Well, I guess that's the disc that's stuck in here. It's a good thing it's not something terrible, like Faces of Death, I don't know. Animation Studio. Well, let's see what that is. Let's check out a video tutorial. 3D Viewport Tutorial. Okay, so, bit of a good news story this time. As you can tell, I'm wearing a different change of clothes. And that's because this project had to get sidelined for a bit. The only trouble was that we were getting uh, what I refer to as admin lock, which is where the previous owner had an admin account set up, and then he had a multiple user account. Uh, and that multiple user account didn't have a login, but it had restricted access to things like system preferences, and a whole bunch of other crap. Found out this thing is a 75 gig hard drive, which is huge compared to like the 10 and 12 gig hard drives that are in my other ones. Thanks to uh, Duke's Apple Herd, which you should check out on YouTube as well for an instructional video that he made. And he answered a couple questions that I had going through this. Anyways, I couldn't be happier. Now this thing is running, it's clean, just like its friend over here. So without further ado, that is it for me, Canadian Computer Collector. Thank you for watching this video. This one took a couple days and I did a little research. I'm gonna try and put some, I can't even put games on this thing. What am I even gonna do with it? Anyway.